Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Dota 2 Canada Cup season number four. We are well underway in our first game of the day with the draft going through. Black Sheep versus Pain Gaming, a Group D match here to start things off. Three of them, in fact, three Group D matches. Pain Gaming versus Black Sheep, Pain Gaming versus Boreal, and then Boreal versus Black Sheep. Some excited Dota to be cast. Uh, of course, again, my name is Mott. Joining me today is going to be our stats man, Jenkins, of course, of Team Leviathan. And F4L, how the hell are you, man? I'm doing pretty good this afternoon. It's been a while, you know. Reserve time. Yeah, it's 7:30. With you, let's be honest. You no, know, I mean, huh? I know. I'm just giving you a hard time. I'm sorry, dude. Sorry. <laughs> Go ahead. I was gonna say I haven't casted with you in like a week, but we're back with Black Sheep versus Pain Gaming. Who actually would you favor here? Uh, I think Pain Gaming is just the better Pain's overall team. team I, I mean, I like the players for Black Sheep. I'm a big fan of the Big Bad Bird and. Your boy JC, obviously there's one specific member that, that hops out at you. Uh, his name is Merlini, and that is the real Merlini for those of you wondering. He likes to stand in for, I think, this team in particular. Uh, like, I think he has friends with them, I'm pretty sure. So, I think he's a stand in. Your boy JC play with Root. Yeah. yeah. Them, your boy JC and the Big Bad Bird, and maybe even I Annihilate, I think, played with Root earlier on in the tournament. They're standing in. Cur remaining. I don't know how it works. I'm not I'm not the admin. Awkward. I'm not going to. Yeah, it's a, it's a bit awkward. It's a little awkward, remaining. but. Uh... They're going to first pick Lion and Storm Spirit. A little surprising to see Storm getting picked up this Dying early. Team. Although, I guess EG, a team that likes to pick up Storm quite early. Yeah. Team it picked. feels like a lot of teams have started running e or Storm Spirit a lot mm -hmm. recently. And it just doesn't seem to have the same effect as what Sumail had at DAC. Like, some t like I saw Quakefoot play Storm earlier today mm -hmm. with Team Tinker. And they played against Asus <clears throat> Polar. They got stomped on in that game. Yeah, I, I think what EG does really well when they play Storm is they get map control and then vision control. And Ten that's seconds. something that's really important when you have a Storm. Like, if you can deny them vision and then get Five better vision, seconds. then you can just ball, get free kills all over the map. Yeah. And, like, knowing when it's okay to go in as a Storm is very important. Like, you need a lot of information when you play this hero. And a lot of times they pick it with something like a Beastmaster... Mm -hmm. Uh, Lycan even, so that they can scout with the wolves. Even like a so. Clockwork with Flare too, mm -hmm. which we see Universe play a lot. Like, yeah, those were like two of the big heroes for Universe at DAC. And I remember I give, I used to give a lot of, like, because Universe is so good on every other hero. And then when you see his Clockwork for the first time, like a couple, like maybe a year or so ago, I you start giving flack to him. And then you realize that he's already gotten good at the hero, seemingly out of nowhere. So now he doesn't really have any problems on any hero that I could think of. But, uh, I mean... It's just Sahil O'Neal, dude. Yeah, it, it really is. It, it, God, that guy's freaking good at Dota. But then again, so are so many people at this game. And of course, <coughs> Merlini, he's a legend in in, in, a, in its own right. So we'll see how he plays this game. Yep, so Payne going to go ahead and ban out the Bristleback Clockwork. Uh, go ahead and pick the Earthshaker out of the gates. Black Sheep going to take the Phoenix Tree and Protector. Another combination that we saw frequently being used by EG. It lets you pretty much get a free egg off in these fights if you can combo it with the overgrowth. It's a very, very strong combination. Did you and see the game earlier with uh, a tree and protector? No, I, in what? It was Dota Pit, and uh, oh, okay. it was, tree was a, it was Asus Polar, and they put oh. FNG on tree, and I'm like, oh, it's definitely support tree and protector. He proceeded to be the safe lane farmer, um, and he got a 10 minute Aghanim Scepter with boots of speed. Huh. It was the and most Ags insane is, thing I've ever seen. I mean, honestly, the Ags on Treant is so good. It's like, amazing. Not only does it give you, it gives you vision like Night Sucker, with like the unrestricted, yeah. uh, what is it called? It's like flying vision, I think, right? Flying, Yeah, flying vision. And I don't know exactly how much vision it gives, but it's pretty big radius. And then you just put them all over the map. It forces the other team to buy a gem, even something like a Quelling Blade, so that it can constantly destroy Die these trees. Bad. And if you don't do that, you just get so much information. It's also the only hero in the game that can scout Roshan. Um, wait, like with the, what's it called? Eyes in the Forest, I believe. Yeah, I think that's what it's called. It's a weird name. So, I mean, it, it is a pretty interesting idea to have it uh, as a farming role. How did they end up doing in that game? They obliterated them. Uh, he had like a 25-minute Refresher Orb <laughs> plus Aghanim Scepter. And they had like yeah, Global I mean, Silence also. And, and like... They they had they had roar they had overgrowth they had 
global it does silence. so much damage. Yeah, that's the crazy thing too. And he was he was mostly at level two ultimate for the entire game. It was like a fifty minute long game, and then he hit level three ultimate. And you're overgrowth for ages, and you actually just take so much damage. There was one really good fight for Team Taker against Asus Polar, but that they got like a, a, a four man black hole and they wiped him. But every single fight after that, they lost uh, pretty heavily. It was uh, it was impressive. They bought a gem and they lost the gem like two minutes after they bought it, so they couldn't buy it for another period of time. And yeah. they just got they kept getting overgrowth and they like they couldn't. The map control. You were exactly right. The map control is ridiculous for the tree and protector. And I kind of want to see him played in the, the, the farming role here. I th honestly think that that worked really well. But could who knows? Be. We'll see what they Although do. Although I think it's going to be a support this game. Unless, yeah. I guess they could give him the safe lane priority. I'm, I'm not entirely sure. But Payne going to go ahead and pick the Templar Assassin. I'm not too sure I'm how this awesome. hero is going to do in this game. Black Sheep with a lot of tools to remove their affection. Like pretty much all of Phoenix's spells. Talk about Storm Spirit every time he gets a... An attack with overload going to remove two refraction charges. Remaining. Even a remnant going to be able to remove an additional charge. So Five STA might have some struggles in the mid game. Yeah, I've, the crazy thing about TA for me is that every single South American team I've watched recently here in Canada Cup has been picking this hero like crazy. And I don't, I don't mind Templar's <laughs> Ashton. She's a mm -hmm. fantastic hero. But I mean, we saw that one crazy performance by um, Blank or Sora. From Union? No, no, the guy that has no name. Yeah, he's blank. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's blank. like an anime thing, man. Don't worry, don't worry about it. Okay. <laughs> Great. Radiant team pick. But uh, it was in the same matchup, I believe. Shadow Fiend versus the Templar Assassin. Up against Ehug, he just went completely out of his mind. Yeah. Yeah, Even stacking up great. the ancients, he got a pooled bottle. Yeah, I the pooled the bottle was the craziest thing, man. Yeah, that, that was pretty crazy, but it'll be interesting to see if he can replicate that same level of play. As Black Sheep, go ahead and last pick the Shadow Fiend. So most likely going to be a safe lane Storm Spirit, Shadow Fiend mid. I think it's a Shadow Fiend versus TA is a pretty even matchup up until five level seconds. like five and six, where it gets a bit more difficult for Shadow Fiend. And then it's seven again. It's Reserve fine for Shadow Fiend because he can just double raise the wave, run away to the jungle. It's going to be important though for Black Sheep to make sure that they buy sentries at level six, yeah. so the SF doesn't just get run down. Slark gonna round out the last pick here for Pain Gaming for 40R. This is gonna be quite the hero. So off lane axe, safe lane Slark with Earthshaker, Skyrath, Mage, support, Templar Assassin in the mid lane. For Black Sheep, you have Storm Spirit mid lane. No, safe lane Storm mid, Shadow Fiend, support yep. Triant Lion, and then off lane Phoenix. Although you can do like an aggro try maybe if you want. I don't know if that's the case though for both sides. Yeah, probably just gonna be that solo off lane Phoenix. He is up against a. Actually, they don't have any kill potential on the Phoenix until Skyrath actually gets that silence. So, mm. might have an easy early game. At least for the first couple of levels. Yeah, but that silence is going to wreck him if he's not too careful. Mm -hmm. um, we'll see. It's not the longest of range, though. So, might be able to secure the dives out. Usually, you want something that has a stun that uh, you can cancel the dive with. But... Five seconds remaining. I although I, I'm actually not sure if you silence him after he cast dive. It doesn't cancel it. I don't think it, it just goes the it. entire way around. Like okay. because you have oh, to stop gotcha, it to gotcha, complete gotcha. it. Okay. Yeah. So that's also pretty good actually. Yeah. So that might be a way that they can actually kill this phoenix. Maybe go for a level two point in the silence and try to get a fissure block. Yeah, I think that's that's a good idea. It's easier said than done though. Phoenix is a slippery guy, but. Mm -hmm. well, we're going to get into the game here as we have Black Sheep versus Pain. Pain, some five man aggression, no smoke or anything. They're just walking top. They have one on the Scarath Mage. He's not going to use it. Mm -hmm. um, and as far as the mid matchup is concerned, it's like Legend versus Legend. King RD, Legend of South America, and he's played for so long. He's, he's quite the player on the Templar Assassin. And, uh, Shadow Fiend played by Merlini, which we've talked about already. So we'll see how this pans out for them. This is going to be, I think, a pretty close matchup. I like both of their drafts evenly, but one team mm -hmm. could easily snowball over the other here early on in this game. I I worry a little bit for pain. Um, in the mid game, it could easily start to snowball in favor of Black Sheep. But if they can get rolling on the TA as well as the Slark, they should be quite okay. And also the blink dagger timing for the axe is very important in this game. Yeah, as it always is nowadays. I've seen actually Axe has had some he's had he's had some troubles recently in uh, this current meta. He's he's lost a lot. 
I think in the past couple of days, Fisher's gonna come out onto Merlin. He blocks him in. He is in trouble. Your boy JC walking forward. Merlin is gonna walk back to the high ground. They can't get the kill, but they do get the bounty rune for Tavo. And now Merlin heads to the top lane. They're actually gonna give I annihilate the midstorm spirit lane, whereas top lane is gonna be the safe lane SF for Merlin going into the carry roll. That's a little interesting. Maybe they were afraid of the sky being there, but I think they could have secured that top bounty for the Shadow Fiend. Maybe being a little bit too timid there, I believe. Both bounty runes actually going for a pain. It's going to be a nice little advantage for them. And that already off to a fast start. No kills early on with these bounty runes, which is surprising, sort of. But, you know, no bloodshed. A bit boring. Oh well, what are you going to do? Meanwhile... Uh, Bog is going to go ahead and stack up some of these camps here in the jungle, which they can give to the TA or even to the Axe if they want to. And he also has eight tangos for Tavo, so he's got plenty of regen to work with. And this is not going to be an easy lane to kill him. I mean, Ja has to kind of get close to Leech Seed, or you might have to initiate with a lion. But as long as he has good positioning, I think uh, Tavo should be okay. I think once they get the level three Shadow Fiend, they can try for a kill with the triple raise doing 175 damage each. It's going to add up quite quickly. <clears throat> yeah, that's a good point because, I mean, Merlinia doesn't really do much right now. He's five stacks. He doesn't do that much right click, I guess. Mm -hmm. So it's really tough to bring down Talvo between these three heroes. So, yeah, it's going to be it's going to come down to levels. Yeah, they're going to just wait until SF level three, probably. Even at level two, they might actually be able to get a kill if they can chain, you know, a hex into Impale Leech Seed, two or three raises. Probably enough to secure that kill, but. Baga is sitting here on the Earthshaker, making sure that that won't be a possibility. Yeah, he's protecting nearby. Protecting his offlane X, who actually hasn't skilled anything. It's a little surprising. Already four last hits, and he's level two. He has yet to skill anything, which could be counter helix, berserk. Yeah, call he's probably trying to figure out if he wants that one call into the battle hunger, which we've seen a lot from offlane X's, especially yeah. Zai. Yeah. I, I like that decision also. Um, it just it's enough damage yes. where it's going to annoy a lot of the supports. Maybe even kill them if you're if you're not doing so hot so they, they're gonna keep or shaker nearby so merlin is gonna go to the side shop he'll purchase up boots um down bottom they're actually they're making sure that the big bad bird doesn't get a free lunch here uh they're making sure they, that he uses that icarus dive on cooldown to save his own life even though it's the two heroes tavo's gonna get cut off of the pass it looks like here Trian actually kind of zoning out the earth shaker maybe not they're not gonna go for him the axe is gonna get away scot-free and uh, baga has his clarity he has no more clarities left so he only has maybe one fisher and the tank Tavo is going to get right clicked by a line, but he just shrugs it off casually with the stout shield Brock. Yeah, so um, they're actually getting quite a lot from this offline. Axe already up to level three. Phoenix having a bit more trouble up against this solo support Skywrath Mage. Sky, one of the better heroes in the game at zoning these offline heroes. Especially something like a uh, Phoenix. Although Phoenix is level two, so now has access to the fire spirits. Once he gets to level three, though. You can really start returning that damage and harassment back onto the sky. Dear boy, there is the battle hunger. Oh, the he's in a lot of trouble. I think he's dead. First blood gonna go to Talvo with a berserker's call. That escalated quickly. Wow. Yeah, that's a little unfortunate for your boy JC trying to connect that pole, but Tavo as well as Baga there to greet him with the battle hunger. And the Fisher combining for an easy kill. What happened there? Why did he get caught out so easily? I'm confused. Uh, he just got battle hungered and then Fishered. I mean, it, Fisher's a really long range. That's so. true. It just feels like that shouldn't have happened. But yeah, probably not. He probably should be a bit safer in this position. Maybe even farming the camp over on this side, just so that maybe Tree can help, or possibly even the SF if they go too far. Mm -hmm. In the end, it's just a bit of a positioning here. He gets caught out. Well, poor. Lion, such as the life of a support lion. Uh, I do so much damage, but I, I actually die in like two hits, and I'm super mm -hmm. ugly. Please help. <laughs> Counts bottom lane. Big bad bird gets the flame spritz off. He actually is gonna live for only a moment oh. longer, and then goes down. Forty yard. Dive was on cooldown, yeah. so it just came off. I coming think. up from bird. Yeah, it just came back up. So yeah. getting a little bit too aggressive, trying to get some lane experience with the dive on cooldown ends up costing him his life. As forty are able to gonna with the pounce think of an easy kill oh, look at this Annihilate i like this play from pain some trouble yeah and i like might yeah, go down definitely... he doesn't have six he's so close though but pain with beautiful anticipation gonna fish her up he does get the living armor and i like still in trouble now the tp yeah, comes in kill. he'll try to turn on this maybe decides uh maybe not uh okay ugly ass line is here to, to help out so 
I'm gonna call him that from now on. Who? The line. Not not your boy JC. I mean any line. Anybody that plays line. You're gonna call him what? I'm just gonna call him ugly ass line. That's that's oh. what I'm gonna call him. <laughs> Great. I mean they are ugly. Yeah, line's just not. He's not an attractive guy. It sucks. Oh. Might want to get think about some cosmetic surgery, possibly. He can't afford that. He's a support, man. Let's be honest here. That is true. You need to be a mid lane line for that. Yeah, exactly. That's when you really think about maybe just uh, maybe you know, uh, let's see, do some facial work, Botox, I and mean, you know, maybe I mean, it's his head, right? It, it's his. Yeah, he he's got like a double chin kind of thing. No, actually, he doesn't. No, it's like the top of his head. I don't yeah, know what's going it's on just like there. his nose, man. He needs rhinoplasty. Yeah, so badly. <laughs> Maybe some dental work. Yeah, him. yeah, definitely, man. This guy's got a lot of work to be done on him. Uh, but uh, smoke coming out from Pain Gaming. They might head to the jungle. They see Merlini, maybe. He's going to back up. Oh, he's in a oh. really awful position. He oh, should not dead. be farming this. Oh, He's going to try to raise. He actually, what? They didn't kill him? He raises and then backs up. Meanwhile, mid lane, King RD in trouble. The hex is up ball lightning. I think he should have saw them. Earthspike's going to come through King RD. No refraction. Your boy JC gets Fisher up. A Fisher out of three. Counter Helix onto one. King RD still alive. The refraction still goes. I annihilate out of mana. They're going to dive. How far will they go? RK Bolt bottling up. Talvo really wants this kill. And he might get it. Has to actually break off pursuit. Ends up being a one for nothing there, and they almost got the TA, but couldn't do so for Black Sheep. Yeah, so really nice for King RD, able to survive, and a really good rotation from Pain. Unfortunately, not able to get the Shadow Fiend. I think he was barely not in vision. He was, they were just close enough to break the smoke when he was like behind these trees, and Shadow Fiend was right here, and then Shadow Fiend like walked this way. And then he like came and back and raised. They couldn't see him, so. Yeah, maybe you could have seen the raise, but maybe his camera wasn't quite at the right position to see that. So. I don't know. I think that was just like a, a ballsy play from like Merlini. Mm -hmm. Just is like ah, I need to. Be I mean, efficient. at the same time, had Merlini fallen there, none of his allies would have actually ended up dying in the mid lane, that's and they true. probably would have killed TA. Yeah, so. that's a good point. So it's it's again the butterfly effect. Actually, yeah. ends up working out better, I think, for Pain in that situation. Yeah. Although you could have stopped Merlini from snowballing and, and maybe getting his next item, which by the way he's going for uh, going for a mech. A mech, so. That's, uh, that's quite the item choice. It's, not a, it's a pretty different. solid choice if you want Dyer's to just like five man early against this pain squad. Uh, they don't really have great team fight. I mean, if you look at their lineup, what do they have? They have like an Earthshaker Fisher. They're relying heavily on the Axe initiation. Um, it's just, and then Slark, a hero that is, you know, susceptible to these five man pushes, so. Mm -hmm. He has a Midas the too, so they can punish useful. him. They can definitely yeah. punish him with that Midas for sure. Uh, TA, what does she have? What does King RD have? All right, FaZe and then probably a Drum coming out with a Bracer up on the Courier now. Axe has his Blink Dagger at about eight minutes into the game, so that's pretty solid, although no Tranquil Boots. So um, he really, I think, wants to just make something happen here. And I Annihilate might be the target to go for with Counter Helix, with Fisher, Berserker's Call. But uh, yeah, now the traps are going to start coming up for the Templar Assassin. They'll have map control, which is huge, so... Yeah, so Payne getting a lot more out of this dual offlane than Birds really struggled in this offlane. Only level 4 really needs to get up to that level 6. We talk about the combo with Supernova and Overgrowth, but that's only useful when both of these heroes are level 6. Jaw actually out-leveling him on the tree in Protector. And oh, the levels on Lion, dude, Black Sheep are very odd. Like, Lion's level 2, yeah. Treant is... I, oh, I know why Treant is 5. They, um, they gave him solo experience top while Shadow Fiend did uh, some camps in the jungle. Uh, I Annihilate? Ancient Seal, he's in trouble. Berserker's Call is ready to go. Oh, okay, then my camera, hello. All right, I, sorry about that. I got the kill, don't worry, guys. I accidentally like, clicked into the well when that kill was uh, in the process of happening. But yeah, Tavo gets a kill, Berserker's Call, Culling Blade, nicely done. Yeah, showing off that Blink Dagger, able to get the Silence Initiation into the Blink Call. Very nice gank from Pain. Definitely the hero that you want to be killing in this mid game. I I'd say that, and obviously stage. the Shadow Fiend as well. He's a big yeah. target. It's a bit harder to kill the Shadow Fiend just because, uh, like, he's always around other heroes. Yeah, he's being they're they're being pretty defensive with their posturing here. Uh, headdress picked up the Ring of Aquila, Power Treads. Obviously, the Mech's flying out in a couple hundred gold. Actually, he has it. the The buckler just comes out, so Mech's done. Has the highest CS in the game, which is not a surprise. Eighty two CS for a Shadow Fiend. There's not much uh, wave clear for any of these squads. Meanwhile, ball lightning in. Baga and Chansom. More ball lightning coming through. He has no pull, but level three remnant plus level four overload. That damage is ridiculous, and I annihilate. It's an easy solo kill. 
Yeah, as long as you can get at least one of the remnant charges to stick. It's pretty much an easy kill even without the vortex onto that support earth shaker. And I think black sheep are doing a pretty good job, you know, keeping calm. They're just going to get their level six onto the phoenix, the mech up on shadow fiend, level six onto the treant protector, and then try to start making some Radiant's plays tower is under attack. with their huge. Bottom tower is what under I would attack. like. This is like some huge mid-game team fight potential yeah. and it's very difficult for pain to fight into this as well yeah and uh, like we talked about you have a slark who went midas he does have treads now but i mean he's he is susceptible to five ends like you talked about and the, the one problem for for black sheep is they just don't have the levels specifically on the line finally phoenix does get six but it took him a while to get there so they could have been aggressive early on however he's going to get a lot of experience hopefully from this stack he'll almost get up to five based on just those creep kills alone so yeah, they need Finger for him, but now they have the level 6s that they really desperately need. I think they could try to push a tower, maybe even defend the tier 1 bottom, which is getting pinged out. They're going to Living Armor at 40 are still going to work, but maybe they go for the mid tier 1 instead. Yeah, I think they should be defending as long... The longer you can defend these tier 1 towers with a tree, the better it is, since he can just heal them back up. And King RD looking to defend mid. Not too sure if this is a good idea or not. He's just hesitating a bit there. Merlin just sure slaps him once with his right click and then just yeah. says, uh, I don't know what I'm doing here. And then backs up. So both teams pretty passive right now. Tree should look to heal this bottom tower. Yep, there's the first cast of the living armor. Man. So you pretty much, that's the thing about this, this line from Pain. They have some push, especially when if mm -hmm. TA gets a Desolator, but yep. up until that point, like, you have to take these towers in one go. We always talk about it with a tree and protector, but mm -hmm. you, you have to try to push as a group, finish off a tower, and, and go from there. Otherwise, it's just going to get healed back up like you talked about. So, Yeah, I think this is favoring pain right now. Like This non-action play style, very passive right now. It's just not going to favor Black Sheep. Sure, they have these two strong cores, but I mean, pain have Slark and TA with the axe as well. Phoenix does tend to fall off into that late game stage. And they really haven't been able to make any plays right now. Pain have done a nice job, you know, splitting the map, having a hero in every lane, not getting caught out during their split push, and finally, they're going to have four heroes in the mid lane. Oh, this is a really good down position this one. from Black Sheep. Merlini is right out in front here, and they don't have much they can do to him at this point. And they almost get that tier 1 tower, they give him living armor, they're going to wait for the next creep wave, they'll throw up a side trap there, which they have clear vision Dyer's of that central ward. I feel like Pain should have at least two members in the bottom lane pushing this, because... Ooh, the initiation, the Berserker's Call is going to go, I Annihilate getting silenced up, there's the mech coming through. King RD getting right click down, overgrowth, the pause comes in, Baga disconnected! Oh, oh no. That oh, is no. a problem. Look at, look at his positioning as well, hasn't... Ooh, it's going to be even difficult for him to get off a Fisher in this situation. Very unfortunate time to disconnect. He's in an Echo Slam, so that is the good thing. He doesn't have his level 6, but this yep. fight is breaking out. <laughs> Merlini is mid Shadow Fiend Requiem of Souls cast. <laughs> this, looks really, this looks really bad for Pain. This, this might be a problem here in a couple of seconds. We're going to see 40R. He does have Shadow Dance. Gets blown up. Does get a Shadow Dance off at the end. They're not going to chase him down. King RD getting chased down. The Supernova going as well. They only get one kill. The pole finally comes in from Annihilate. They get two. They're looking for more. They get the double proc there with the Remnant and the Overload onto 1-2 and Baga. They'll back away. They're going to get the Tier 1 Tower. I Annihilate thinking about continuing on, but decides against it. And they get the tier 1 tower. I guess that could have been a lot worse for Pain, but they still lose two heroes in a tier 1 tower. I mean, they lost two cores, a tier 1 tower. They didn't gain anything from that. They weren't applying any split push pressure. So that was about as bad as it gets, honestly, with a defense. Not even able to get a deny or anything. They just went a bit too aggressively with that initiation onto the Shadow Fiend. They should have known how well protected he was. I mean, there was a lion standing next to him, a treant behind him. And the Phoenix just comes in, TPs for that easy assist. I really think they should have had two heroes just hitting this bottom tower. Because now this is just going to get healed. It's, and so uh, all that split push work you did with the Slark in the bottom lane is just going to be for nothing. Now, it's still pretty low. They haven't really touched it yet with the heals. Meanwhile, Axe pops up a Battle Hunger. 40R is right in front of the tower with Shadow Dance. He doesn't have a blink. He only has Ultimate Orb. They're going to... Yep, they're going to actually hit him up with uh, a Necrostive and Flame Spirits, but they just kind of say, what's up? So, 
We're at 14 minutes into the game now, and they, the, the Sork is the highest net worth because he has that Midas, obviously, but that fight from Black Sheep, if they continue on that path, they're in a good spot. However, they're not really doing anything anymore. They're just kind of sitting top farming with Merlini, I guess kind of waiting for the ultimates to come back off cooldown. Yeah, and what do you think about Slark's decision, decision to pick up an ultimate orb first, not going for one of these mobility mm -hmm. items like a Shadow Blade or even a Blink Dagger? So most likely going for the, I think it's a Scotty yeah, first. Yeah, it should be a Scotty. Um, you know, sometimes we see people foregoing these mobility items, but they usually pick up a Saint Genyasha. Yeah. So this is a bit interesting, not a build that I'm too accustomed to seeing. I've seen this a couple times where they just go Scotty first, yeah. and it generally doesn't work out as well, I think. I don't know the exact stat on it, but... I mean, the thing about like Blink and Shadow Blade is they make you farm faster. Just because you can use the built-in mobility, as well as the like, Shadow Blade gives you a lot of great farming stats, and then Blink allows you to just blink around the jungle, farm it up really fast. But Pain are able to split push, get this bottom tier one tower. Actually, hmm. wasn't able to be healed up by Jaw. So yeah, I think they could have defended that a bit, a bit harder, and maybe just you know, actually save the tower with living armor. I'm surprised they didn't move everyone down there. Uh, whatever. I'm surprised actually that he didn't preemptively heal it. Like, it was sitting at about 300 life, and yeah. I think he only cast the Living Armor on it once, so... Yeah. It could have done a bit better of a job, but... In the end, they trade a Tier 1 top for a Tier 1 bottom. Not the biggest of deals, doesn't really matter. Speaking of big deals, Axe, the big deal himself, jumps on the Big Bad Bird. Calling Blaze, see you later! You and You, in fact, are dead. You're not so much of a Big Bad Bird anymore. You're a dead bird. It's a bit unfortunate. And King RD now has the Yasha on the TA, so it will be interesting to see. I think the South American TAs, they generally go for this, uh, you know, Yasha into Desolator builds, sort of popularized by Dragon Fist. What a legend. Is he still up in terms of the, uh, the leaderboards for North America? He was first for a while, wasn't he? Or he was up there at least? Yeah, he was first for a while. I don't know if he I still have no is. Idea, yeah, honest. I have to check that. I don't check that enough. TA picking scum. Yes. <laughs> Bastard. <laughs> you're going to like meet Wagamama in real life. She's like, you're a son of a bitch or something. I, I met know. him at D2O. Oh, did you? Yep. He was He's there a, doing that, uh, the, uh, eye yeah, yeah, tracking yeah, 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 yeah. thing. For the, uh, it was like the big convention that was happening down uh -huh. in Vegas, I yeah. think. He's a good dude. He's he's a solid. He, we just talked about Dota at TI4. He's a good guy. Blank Berserker is called. Talbo going under Merlady. This could be a huge kill. Not going to get the mech off. He TP'd a bit too close to that tower. They end up picking up the kill. That yeah, is a huge kill for them. That slows them down immensely. And actually, Merlini going to go with this Yules build after getting a mech and a blink. Hmm. That feels like maybe, not, maybe too many, like, utility too items. Many, yeah, too many utility items. Usually, if we see someone going for a Yules, they don't opt for this mechanism. It just seems a bit too... Especially because he's not... He's Radiant's not even in the mid lane, like, he has a storm, so... Sure, storm can do a lot of damage, but Dyer's I think you really need the Shadow Feeling to do a lot of right-click. I mean, uh, early on in the game, you could get away with not getting any you know, right-click <laughs> items because you have Necromaster Yeah, usually you just get, like, Yules. So. But I don't know about Radiant's having both of those items. I think, um, Xiaowait's, like, a real proponent of this, uh, mech build on Shadow Feeling, but he... I don't think he ever attack. goes Yules with it. Generally, not even going a blink dagger either. Yeah. Ops for something like a BKB straight afterwards Radiant's to make him super tanky. Like, you have the magic immunity Dyer's plus the armor from mech as well attack. as the heal. Makes you fairly invulnerable in the mid game Dyer's stage. I mean, he'll survive if he doesn't get jumped on by like all five heroes. Like, he has yules. Yeah. I think he prime one of the reasons why he bought that is so that doesn't happen again where he just gets jumped on and he can't yules himself. Yeah. I, I don't know. That's partially it, I think. But uh, we'll see what item he goes for after the yule scepter is done. Um, maybe like Manta and Descati. Actually, I don't know. Is Manta the right choice for an SF? I'm not sure. Mm. Like, Manta is good and bad in this situation. It removes the refraction, or not the refraction. Yeah, it removes refraction charges faster. It takes off the Ancient Seal Silence. It is not very effective against the Call and the Earthshaker as well, so. So what's your item then for a Shadow Fiend in mm. this situation? After Yules, I should say. Uh, I think you go Scotty Butterfly this game. That sounds right. Scotty just like, seems like everyone goes for that that item nowadays. You want to get super tanky on the Shadow Fiend, and Scotty is just probably the cost, most cost efficient item, even better than BKB, because yeah. 
You're going to get initiated on probably by the axe, and then you're not going to be able to push BKB anyways before all this magical damage comes. Scotty seems to be a solid choice for a lot of heroes. I, I like the item a lot. I think it's it's good. It costs a bit much, but that's all right for good Dyer's reason. Top uh, 40 R, speaking of Scotty, has his, which we talked about. He goes from Midas straight Dyer's into Scotty. Um, not something you see every day, but... Dyer's middle tower he's doing okay so far. Yeah, I don't think he's died yet. I mean, yet. he has yeah. a lot of CS. He has 168 at 19 minutes, so... Nearly a 10 CS per minute pace in the early game. And I and I like kind of just scaring him off with... He has the Orchid, so... But Dark Pact is, is pretty good. Maybe this is a... We saw a lot of Slark uh, Manta games. I don't know mm -hmm. if this is one of those games, but... Yeah, against the Storm. Yeah. Yeah. Might be one of those games. I think it would be pretty solid just to make sure that uh, can get out of that silence. It also gets him out of overgrowth, and it's a cheap alternative to the BKB. But at the same time, you look at the heroes of Black Sheep, and BKB just makes so much sense. Like, all of their damage right now is magical. Yeah. I mean, I mean SF doesn't have any right-click items, so... He doesn't do much yet. Really entirely oh, yeah. magic damage. I think you just go for a BKB if you're 40R. Yeah. And, and Manta's, I mean, people kind of scoff at that item for... for um, Slarks, but there are certain situations where it yeah, works out. Yeah, I think if there's like only one or two disables, and um, for instance, if oh, Merlini is actually in trouble in the bottom lane. Is he dead? Berserker's Call is ready to go. The Illusion comes in. He's going to try to block with it. Wow! Oh, that was sick. It's not going to be enough, I don't think. Tavo should get this kill. The Sunray, they missed the ult, the Arcane Bolt, but Merlini's going to go down. I Annihilate trying to jump into the backside. The Skyrath Mage getting right. Click the finger onto Tavo. Might deny himself. Does not. They both go down, the Skyrath and Tavo. And uh, two for one exchange, but meanwhile, top lane and towards the middle lane, you're getting a lot of farm for 4DR. Yeah, so end up actually trading two kills back for the Shadow Fiend. Not too terrible, although, you know, your main core is the Shadow Fiend, so a little unfortunate that he ends up going down there. But in the meantime, like you said, 4DR getting so much out of this top lane. Already up to 2,700 gold on top of this Scotty. I mean, this Sark is getting dangerously out of control. Yeah. He could certainly take over this game. He's going to have level 3 Shadow Dance at the moment. Nature's guys in 40R can't continue to chase. Um, Do you think you go for a mobility item into BKB? I, maybe like a Blink BKB, I think, could be pretty strong, or... Um... I don't know. Let's see. Maybe you don't BKB. get any mobility items. I don't think items. so, because... You have I mean, they're probably the going to initiate on you anyways, right? Yeah, I think so. And also, I mean, you have Axe to work with, you have the Earthshaker Fisher to work with as well, so I don't know if you need to get in. It's more so to maybe just get out a little bit, which is why you get a BKB, is so you stay, for the most part. Uh, you know, you're in a good position, I should say. He does go the... Alright, so that answers the question. He gets the blink. He picks it up. Yeah, so getting that blink. We always talk about how more blinks, the better for your team. Oh, Annihilate in trouble. Shadow Dance is going to go. Hobalt Lightning trying to juke away from 40R. They're actually baiting this kind of... In... Are they going to overgrowth think... him? I don't no, think no. they can kill him. They can't kill him. Not enough mana onto the storm. Merlini backing up, realizing the rest of them are kind of missing off the map. He'll wait for uh, a couple heroes down bot to help him out, and he might bait this. In fact, he is. He's definitely baiting this. Yeah, Blank this Berserker's really call nice the Hex beat. immediately, but now the Mystic Flare comes in. Silence as well. Merlini gets the mech off, but just barely. Yule Scepter's gonna go, but he is in trouble. Now, there's gonna be the Ball Lightning. Merlini's able to blink out and they actually get the kill onto Axe. They're gonna chase after Baga. The right click coming in with the Overload proc. Big bait from Merlini. He stays alive. He regens back up the Living Armor. Baga actually survives because he gets onto the other side of the trees. Meanwhile, King RD coming in has Desolator, has a lot of right click. 40 R's here as well. This might not be the fight anymore. Pounce. There's gonna be the dark pack. He, he gets hexed up. He doesn't have Shadow Dance. 40 R. Orchid's up. He's dead. Yule Scepter back up. King RD in some trouble as well. Pain are throwing this fight away. And they'll get three kills on the side of Black Sheep. Big fight coming the way of the Dire Squad. Thank you. A very awkward fight from Pain. I'm not too sure why they decided to take that. I mean, Earthshaker had TP'd out. The Skyrath doesn't have any mana or life. They just try to go in with these two cores, but... I mean, you don't even have Shadow Dance available. That was very questionable from Pain. End up getting three kills for nothing. I think you were fine with losing Axe in that situation because they burned all of their ultimates besides the Requiem of Souls. But... Uh, you know, going a bit too aggressive, too greedy in that situation, trying to go for the big outplays and ends up biting them 
in the end. Now, this, I mean, the storm has an Aegis, a Bloodstone now available. He's so farm. things are looking pretty nice for Black Sheep right now. Yeah, I don't know where that Bloodstone came from, but he certainly has it. So I Annihilate is feeling himself right now for Pain. They, they get a little bit stifled in terms of their next itemization. We already talked about the Blink Dagger for 40R. Baga does pick up his, so now that's another uh, thing you have to worry about if you're for Black Sheep. Let's see what else here. We already talked about the Deso. Tavo has a Vanguard plus an Ogre Club. So, I mean, they have tankiness, they have ways to survive, they have ways to initiate, they have ways to fight. Mm -hmm. But the BKBs are just going to be paramount for pain. I think once they get the BKBs, the fights get a lot harder for Black Sheep, especially the BKB on Axe, so that the next time he Blink initiates with the call, they can't hex him up, uh, won't be able to actually counter initiate on an him with anything him. They won't be able to except for the overgrowth. I mean, yeah, they won't be able to kill him. I mean, 40 armor plus a BKB, there's no way that they should do that. So. Yeah. And then the BKB on Slark, like we talked about, going to do a lot of work in these teamfights. I also expect yep, King Artie also going for a BKB. So they're going to have they're going to have this window when they get like three fresh BKBs, and that's going to be the time when they should attack. look to try to win this game. Oh, Forty Arc gets hexed up. They have Earth Spike, I believe. He get it set on to two. Tavo, he's got to be careful. Yule Scepter up. Nice play from Merlin. He's going to pop up his ultimate. Tavo trying to TP out. Ball Lightning, the pull long range from Ionilate gets off. They get the kill. Supernova goes as well, just in case. Ball Lightning further. One two stayed a little too long. Didn't even see him there. He gets obliterated. <laughs> And, uh, well, it's just another two quick kills there. And your boy, JC, getting kind of lucky with the Earth Spike onto the two Euros as he blinks in. Yeah. Pretty could say luck or a bit of skill. True, you know? true. He timed it. I take luck over skill all the time. Dyer's but, uh, yeah, the, I mean, Pain just seemed to be tunneling a bit onto the Shadow Fiend right now, I think. Sure, Shadow Fiend's a nice kill, but you really just need to farm these BKBs as King RD actually gets initiated on in the mid lane, gets orbited up. First flight? All right, he, he held on to yeah, that he's for a while. in a lot of trouble. But I Annihilate going to work. This Storm Spirit now starting to ball out of control. Literally. <laughs> 11. Uh, like, I mean, he's got 11 Bloodstone charges already and up to nearly 3,000 gold. Where did this Phoenix Ags come from, by the way? Wait, Phoenix has Ags? Yeah. Yeah. Somebody's going to get right. their life saved in one of these fights. Oh, it's going to be for the Storm. Like, you, you let Storm use all his mana and then you egg. Yeah. And then you tree ults so that they can't break the egg. At least not until they get BKBs. Which, I mean, which they are coming. I think Pain have, like, completely misplayed, like, their composition in the last five to ten minutes. Like, yeah. we saw they were doing completely fine. You just constantly split push. It's a bit difficult against a storm, but there are safe ways to do it. And Tavo's going to die again before getting his BKB. Well, he's pretty tanky. Actually, they're going to overgrowth him, but... He's dead anyways. The Sunray will go to secure the kill for the big bad bird, and BKB is picked up for the Shadow Fiend, but that's has the fight's supernova. breaking out now. There's going to be a Supernova. He can't get it off. The Silence goes. They get the kill with 40R. Bog is not going to be so lucky. He goes down. Ends up being a 2 for 1 or a 3 for 2. I'm not sure. 40R trying to man up. The Hex is going to go. He has Shadow Dance. He does Dark Pact off that, the Earth Spike. Now the Requiem is going to go. He gets Silence. Earth Spike does go into King RD. Merlady backing up. Has Requiem still. Mystic Flare is going to go, but it's split up between the two heroes. They're not even really getting tickled by that. And I Annihilate gets another double kill. And for some reason, Pain keep trying to fight without BKBs into this lineup. And I feel like it's really costing them the game. If they just waited, if they just waited to get BKBs, they this game was probably in their favor. Except they get killed like five to ten times. And now they're barreling down mid. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, they really missed out on their timing window. Like... If you get the try BKB onto Axe, TA, and Slark, you have this window when you have like these 10 to even like, even all the way up to I would say 7. They start to lose their effectiveness when they get to like 6 and 5 seconds. But I mean, if you're, if you're, all your cores are completely invulnerable to the damage that Black Sheep have for 10 seconds, that first fight is nearly impossible to lose at that point. Yeah. It's also a way to get out of the overgrowth, make sure that they can't just overgrowth egg. Also prevents the fire spirits from reducing your attack speed, so you'll be able to kill the egg. I don't know. It's just a lot of like bad fights being taken from pain, like over and over, and you know so a bit of impatience as well. And it all started in that bottom lane fight when they try to re-engage after a lot of ults were expended to kill the axe, not ending up working out for them. And Black Sheep have taken a strong control of this game. I mean, we're finally seeing these BKBs come out for Pain Gaming, but uh, we, we we give a lot of we haven't given a lot of credit to Black Sheep. Also, they've played yeah. very well. I mean, Pain have made some big mistakes, but 
Black Sheep have they've they've actually executed their plan pretty flawlessly for the most part. I annihilate specifically. I talked mm -hmm. about how I don't see most storms nowadays doing as much work as Sumail did. This is one of those games where he he's actually doing so much work for his team, it's impressive. He's gonna have a hex soon. We talked about his blood soon, it's now at 14 charges, so his mana regeneration is through the roof. Good stuff for the yeah, storm. His, his movement's been very good. And working towards that hex even gonna have that pretty soon as well. Might consider going for a BKB, although he does have the two lives can even get saved by the Phoenix, so maybe not too worried about the silence that comes out from Skyrath. At this point, though, I, I guess we should talk about the fact that Pain haven't lost a Rax yet. There's, there's no way, shape, or form is this game over. In hmm. fact, if you look at the net worth, it's only a 2,500 net worth lead for Black Sheep because they were behind the whole game. So all I of mean, a sudden, they, it's wow, not they were that behind 7,500, and yeah. that was. That was nearly just a pure farm lead, and a lot of it was because of the Slurk. Slurk did such a good job in the early early to mid game, just farming the entire map, not getting picked off by the storm with the orchids. It's been impressive coming out for uh, for pain gaming, at least for the most part, early on in the game, and then it kind of just dwindled with these last couple of moments. But for for Black Sheep, they're gonna just sit back and farm a little bit. Roshan is not available. Uh, that was just taken, I believe, not too long ago. I, I, yeah, they the, just uh, Black Sheep took it. Yeah, it was on Storm. Yeah, but they never used it. Yeah. I'm and losing yep. it, man. I forgot about it. I don't know. Yeah, sometimes we do cast so many Dota games a day, it all blurs together. But <laughs> I think, yeah, that uh, can definitely happen. As we see, Merlini actually getting very aggressive with his positioning. Ends up actually blinking onto the ancient camp. Oh, he wants to stop them from stacking, so. It's a pretty cute play. 40R getting hexed up. This would be a big kill. They have the pull. They're going to use it. He's pretty tanky. They use the finger to secure the kill, though. Nice play. I mean, they have two hexes. Another hero. So, as long as he doesn't actually dark pact one of them, it's going to be set up for a free and easy kill. And Sark has a lot of trouble now, even with this BKB. And. The reason why I said that Pain have this window is because they have to find these fights with their BKBs because Black Sheep's pick potential with the Storm and Lion is so high. I mean, they have a Hex on the Storm. The Lion also has a Hex. They can just stun someone who's split pushing for, I mean, what is it, like 10 seconds, maybe even more? And you're just going to die to a Storm at that point. Mm -hmm. Radiance top tower is under attack. <sighs> I annihilate, man. He's in fact he's an he's attack. annihilating some people. He's he's uh, his namesake's correct. Two two towers gonna get denied bottom. I annihilate avoids a fisher. He's being cheeky in the top lane. There's the BKB for the axe finally done. Merlini taking the enemy ancients, which by the way he has like four defensive slash utility items: BKB, blink, mech, Yules. So he has yet to get any single right click item, and I don't know if he actually will this game. <laughs> I think you go for a Butterfly or a Scotty right here if you're Merlini. It'll be interesting to see which one he picks up. I think uh, Scotty's a bit better. Just gives him some added tankiness. Make sure that he can get his mech and BKB off in these fights. Even like just getting off the Requiem of Souls is a big deal. Yeah. He's been silenced a couple of times while casting it. Now that's not going to be an issue anymore. Uh, they saw a job, but Ooh, did they, they didn't see jump this? on him. I'm not sure if they actually saw the smoke they're or all not. backing up jaw's gonna be the window he he actually is nature's guys so they have no idea they, they know the smoke is broken fisher comes out a bit too late jaw blinks away immediately realizing i need to leave and uh they avoid any confrontation so pain kind of just a hell mary smoke play that doesn't work out mm -hmm. yeah very well played from jaw on the tree and protector working as that sort of movable observer ward with the nature's guys just scouting out the entire team, even breaking the smoke and then immediately blinking out. He wouldn't have Saving. to do that if he had eyes of the forest. Let's be, if he had an axe. That is true. Let, like, come on. No, it wouldn't break the smoke, though. Yeah, but they would see the smoke because he would have it. No, and then it would be... Okay, sure. If he had Unless they one, did it in base. In their base? Yeah. <laughs> they did it in base, so... All right, well, then I, I'll, I'll give the benefit of the doubt to, to yeah. Payne. King RD farming mid, 3.2k gold in the bank. What's he going to go for next? He has the Asha to finish up the Mansa. Could go like Daedalus if he wants more damage. Uh, I don't think he'd need any more um, defensive items because of the BK. Daedalus? Yeah, Daedalus sounds, sounds good. I mean, you still have the problem of getting Hex before you BKB, so... Well, I mean, that's the, the problem with that is that... 
There's everyone no has real that problem. To that. Yeah, exactly. There's no solution. I mean, everyone has the problem. If you buy a Lincoln's, but then you're just sacrificing a lot of potential damage because Lincoln's doesn't give great stats. I don't think that's, that's the choice game. for that. That's, that's I think, think Daedalus. You go Daedalus, and then you just hold your high ground and hope that you can get to like the super late game with Sark. Yeah, and then he takes over. Yep. Big Bad Bird, 40 yards, going to blink away. There's a couple heroes top lane. There's a smoke coming out from Black Sheep, but they haven't really accomplished anything with it. Merlini did pick up the butterfly, so you were right on the money with that item choice, unsurprisingly. I mean, that's that's a, the standard choice, I think, the right choice. So yep. bit, bit, bit of damage, and obviously the evasion's huge, because no one's going to go MKB anytime soon. So maybe I think TA has to go MKB instead because of the butterfly. We'll see. Yeah. Or the uh, Daedalus, excuse me. MKB instead of Daedalus. Hmm. I mean, it's good if you're hitting the Shadow Fiend, but Shadow Fiend honestly is maybe not the biggest priority. I think Storm is a bigger priority. So if you can take Storm down during that silence or call duration, it might be just better to have the Daedalus. I'm not sure. Yeah, that's true. I'm sure there's arguments to be made for both. I think Daedalus is just a bit better in this situation. Turns this is a very risky Roche. Yeah, I don't. This is ballsy as all hell. I don't think you can. I annihilate. It's on the high ground. I don't really know how you go in if you're paying. Finger comes out from the line, actually kills the Skyrath, which I didn't even catch. I annihilate was looking for that gem, doesn't find it. Summary's gonna come out. Merlidia is jumping in alone. He says, "Let's go. Let's not be scared of these heroes. We have an advantage in numbers." And they're, and gonna they're gonna go right into Roche. In Roche. And what can Pain do at this point? I mean, they did they they did that without even smoking. I think. Yeah, so... I'm pretty sure they just ran into it. Roshan has fallen. Yeah, I was kind of awkward I mean, way. Uh, there was no wars, right? Like they had a gem and they cleared all the wards, so it wasn't like the worst play, especially considering the map control they have. But you need to show some heroes on the map if you're gonna try to sneak a Roche like that. It's Maybe. so obvious. If all of the heroes disappear from the map. They're either smoke ganked or they're roaching, and Black Sheep able to easily scout out the roosh with the static remnant as well as even the dive, so. It's kind of a damned if you do, damned if you don't, because if you're not showing all of the heroes on the map, then they know, but, I mean, Black Sheep maybe finds out anyways, and then you have a, a numbers disadvantage with the four versus five with an already farmed BS team. Yeah, that is true, but I think... If you're going for, like, that's a risky play in general. Yeah, I mean, it, yeah, you're absolutely so, right. I, I guess they had to do something there, but I don't yeah. know if that was it. I think you just show, like, maybe the Slurk even in, like, the top lane. And then the Roche is not as obvious. Hmm. They give I Annihilate the Aegis. I guess they could save Merlini with the, the Supernova, which we already talked about when the Storm. I mean, Aegis is just so effective on Storm. There's yeah. no reason not to give it to him. Up to 15 Bloodstone charges. Has more mana than health even at this point. Your boy is nature's guys. They're going to jump in. They actually miss on a King RD. Merlini just walks back up. Avoids the Fissure by blinking out with a Concussive Shot coming soon after. Yeah, the good thing about this build is how good it is for sieging. Able to... Oh, the Hex long range 40R jumps in. They get the Earth Spike off. 40R in some trouble. It gets the overgrowth. Pops the BKB. Stays alive. Lion already done. Iron Island has the Aegis. Requiem goes. Doesn't do anything. The BKB is there for all the heroes. And now KRD getting mad fought. He's actually in trouble. The Supernova saves Merlini. That was not a fight he could win. And so TA goes down. But it's the only hero to die on the side of pain. They glyph. Merlini is going to go back to fighting the tower. And still, though, the Aegis expended. Blink forward. Berserker's call. Iron Eyelid in trouble. They'll try to keep him alive. He's getting low. Calling Blade misses, but it doesn't matter. 40R might not be so lucky. Echo Slam keeps him up. Our lady can't get the kill. No blink. Flame Spirits, he's too far away. Tavo pops the Berserker's call. They're too deep in. They haven't even got the tier 3 tower. They're going to try to bring him to the tier 4 tower. Won't be so lucky. Merlini needs to leave. They jump back in. They're going to force him out. Pounce only hits on a jaw, but Merlini is so low. He can try to Yules up onto 40R. Dark Pack goes. Will he use it now? Turns to raise. Yules? Yules doesn't go. They're going to leave the big bad bird behind and a big defense from Pain Gaming. Merlini actually might not make it out. He's chasing. 40R has plenty of time to get here. Uh... He's thinking about it. Blink, blink. Fisher's gonna go here from Baga. No, he just has it. Misses. Oh. Merlini has Yule still. He yeah, can blink away alive. and he will. Now he's actually baiting with Iron Island. He's gonna go further. Gonna jump onto one, two. They leave Merlini to defend for himself here. Yule Scepter goes. Hex up onto 40R. Earth Spike is available if they want to use it. All the way back across the way. Iron Island like, jump again. He's out matter? of mana. BKB goes. And now he's going to jump in. Tavo misses the call. I Annihilate avoids it. Earth Spike. Overgrowth comes in. Oh, the Fisher no. comes out. Tavo pops the BKB. Ball lightning further. Overload proc. Not going to go because, of course, he is BKB. And he's got that magic immunity. Merlin, he's going to work. Berserker's call goes. Helps him for a moment. But Tavo is going to fall to the right click of I Annihilate. 
And they're still going to go further. 4DR might be the next target. Your boy JC looking to maybe jump it with a 4 staff. Decides against it. Has the blink dagger. But in the end, a long-winded fight actually goes in favor of BS despite losing an Aegis and their storm. I would say that was a little bit in favor of Pain just because of how like how many tools they had to continue that fight. Like, an, You have an Aegis Storm, you had this Phoenix Supernova where you saved the Shadow Fiend and then he has complete new life again. And they ended up trading fairly evenly. It was only on this like chase where they started to lose a bit of ground, losing the Axe during the chase, but... Honestly, it was a very nice defense from Pain. Now having the MKB on the Templar Assassin, so Merlin is going to have to be a bit more careful. Yeah, so they did go for the MKB. They do have Supernova Ags again for mm -hmm. the big bad bird, but I'm surprised yeah, they're, gonna have to use it are going, on, they're, they're uh, continuing Storm. to go. Even though they don't have Aegis? Hmm. Yeah, it does look like 40 r is actually going to get his own MKB onto the Slurk. I'm not sure. This is, a, this is a tough fight for, for both squads, honestly. And I guess you have to make this play for BS, but... Because you, you can't really afford to get to the late game against 40R, I don't think. Yeah, I mean, it's going to be very difficult going up late game against a Slurk, as well as TA, even Axe, I think, scales a lot better than the Phoenix. I mean, I mean, Black Sheep, they have a lot of disables. You know, the Lion we talked about, they have the Hex on to the Storm Spirit. So they have a lot of items that are very good in the late game. And, you know, a Storm that gets super fat is also nothing to scoff at. Yeah. The storm could also build BKB still, which is something we haven't seen yet. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. I mean, he's, Although, he's gotten Ancient Sealed a couple of times. Yeah, I guess, like, his last death would have been completely avoided. Yeah. Might even turn the game around if he had the BKB, so... The thing is also, the BKB, is, if he gets it, it's going to you know, be that 10-second charge, whereas it's starting to wane down. I mean, it's only 8-second charge now for Pain Gaming, with the exception of the 9-second one on TA. So they still have a long time before these BKBs become not as useful. Yeah, that is true. I mean, it, it could go any way, this game, though. Maybe another Roshan will be uh, the ticket for one of these squads. A 10k net worth lead for Black Sheep and a... 14,000 experience lead. They have not been able to crack the tier 3, however, and Whoa, well, that's the problem. 40 r actually picks up this MKB, so going to be able to deal with Merlini's evasion onto the Shadow Fiend. Merlini, what's he picking Scotty. up? He just got a Scotty. Oh, he got a Scotty, okay. It's on the career, in fact, so it's flying out to him. So now, you, yeah, you can deal with the evasion, but he's still pretty tanky with uh, the HP. Yeah. I mean, he's very tanky at this point. The magic immunity as well. Up to 2,600 HP. 20 armor as well. Although that a lot of that armor gets reduced from the Desolator, so... They might actually be able to take him down quite fast. It's going to reduce it all the way down to 4. With the meld as well as the Desolator. Supernova only works on one hero, right? Um, one extra yep. hero? Okay, it's not like Snowball. Yeah. Yeah. That, that would have been rigged. You just, uh, like, click it on the hero that you want to ult. I don't actually know the range, unfortunately. Oh, I can Is it while you're ulting or before you're ulting? No, uh, before you ult. Okay. So, like, if you hover over Supernova, it gives you this AoE. Oh. And that's, like, the range of a hero that he can ult. Okay. And you just click that after you click the, your, your R button? And no, you works. just R button, and then you click an ally. Okay. And then it starts the ult. All right. I got it. I got yeah. it. I don't know why this is such a hard concept for me, but <laughs> I'm struggling, apparently. Somebody send help, please. Um, man. This has been a, a fantastic game, actually. A couple of mistakes from both squads. Mostly pain. I think earlier on we talked about them not hitting their timing. And, but they, they, when they got those BKBs, you saw how, how vastly this, this game kind of yeah. changed. I mean, could you imagine if when they had their advantage, they just sat back, farmed, you know, had some good defensive wards up, make sure that they don't die to this Storm Spirit play very defensively, just wait for the BKBs. I think this could have been a very difficult game for Pain. I mean, for Black Sheep. Yeah. Yeah, I think That's you're right. absolutely right. I mean, and it's just that if they weren't, they weren't really patient, they were trying to take fights, and they were farming a bit too far out of their comfort zone across the river, and um, Black Sheep exploited that. However, it's water on the bridge now, as we have still, again, no Tier 3 towers taken for either squad. Tier 2s are still up for Black Sheep, but, I mean, as despite what the numbers might say, in terms of the net worth graph, this game is still in hanging in the balance at this point. And Roshan I mean, has respawned, though, so they, they know yeah, what's the, up. 
the later you start to get in this game, the less this net worth matters. I mean, 68,000 to 76,000, what is that? Uh, it's not even a 10% advantage at this point. Yeah. Ba barely 10%. So, actually, it's just actually almost exactly 10%. But uh, it's not as meaningful as it was uh, 20 minutes ago when it's a you know 20 to 30% advantage. Yeah, and that, the numbers, that's why as the game goes later, you're, you're right. The Yeah, you, it's just the numbers don't mean as much. People need to remember that. The Sunray's going to go into Roche Merlin. He's in there. He's just trying to take it down. He has also like 5k gold, so his next item. Oh, might be we're going to have a huge team fight here. They're going to go like... in. Your boy JC avoids 40R. Now the call goes. Merlin oh, doesn't get hit up by it. And he's actually fine right now. Pops the BKB. Requiem's going to go. They pop their own BKBs. No, 40R still has Shadow Dance. He'll pop his BKB. I Nihilate going to get the kill on the Baga. Overgrowth is going to go. Merlin getting kind of low. They need the Supernova here. They actually take down I Annihilate. This fight not doing too poorly so far. Figure on to 40R, but he is going to stay alive. They keep the line up and ready to go. No, he falls. Supernova doesn't catch him, and Merlini not oh, inside no. of it. Raze blinks forward. King RD is going to fall. Buyback from Baga. They do have a buyback for TA. Yule Scepter onto the axe. Icarus Dive is going to go. They want to keep fighting Supernova. Baga walking in. Blink Echo Slam onto Merlini. Fisher comes. They force him out. Ancient Seal up as well. Still pretty tanky, but I think he might fall here. Berserker's call. Merlini staying alive, but just barely. Almost getting Tavo. Meanwhile, on the backside, they take down the Tree Protector. Merlini getting low. The right click. The Enchant Totem. The Arcane Blast. They get the kill. Merlini's dead for 93 seconds. What a fight for Pain Gaming. Oh, a couple of mistakes for Black Sheep as well. Yeah, a huge team fight from Pain Gaming. They did use the buyback onto Earthshaker, but they're going to be perfectly happy with that. Able to take down the Storm and the Shadow Queen, the two main cores of Black Sheep. Very important to kill this Storm, reduce the Bloodstone charges, which are now down to eight. And, oh, what a huge fight from Pain. I mean, you can just see how much work they can do now with these MKBs as well as the BKBs online. I mean, Axe even missed his first two calls in that fight, and the fight still went heavily in their favor. Iron Outlet is getting, I think, too aggressive. He, he yeah, ball lightnings into the I entire other team, and he Without doesn't have a BKB. BKB. You can't yeah. do that against this. Like, he just got, sure, he kills Earthshaker, but for his own life. And that's not worth it. Like, the Skywrath does so much to him with the silence even the ultimate without this BKB. BKB is definitely going to be on the menu for I Annihilate. He needs one desperately. I, that's his his last probable mm. item coming out. He has a Bloodstone. He already has Orchid, a Scythe, and a, a Shiva's Guard. So there's really only one other thing he could go for. Baga's going to spot him out. Shadow Dance from 40R, interestingly enough. But they don't go for the kill. The Till bots away. Your boy JC actually going to survive as well. But now Roche is on the menu. I Annihilate. With Merlini being down here, they could probably take this. I think you just rush. And especially they knew that Storm uh, went away. Although... Ooh, that fire spirit, though. King RD actually wasn't in the pit. Yeah, I don't know. If I think if he was on the same page as his team, they could have easily taken Roche. I mean, he kills it so fast with this TA, the meld, the desolator. He does some work. Seven armor reduction for the desolator, eight from the meld, plus his right click already, and MKB. Yep. And actually, Merlini's going to go in. Are they going to fight this? He's taking it down. They have the, the trap in there, but King RD already knows. And Merlini I think getting it low. A huge, huge opportunity. To they get still rushed. have a chance to defend or fight this. Merlini is maybe going to get caught. The jump in from 40R. They hex up onto Tavo. BKB from Merlini. 40R getting kind of low, but again, he does have Shadow Dance to work with. Overgrowth. They're going to lose 1 2 in here in a second. Actually, get out. 40R has to back away. King RD about to kill that poor Phoenix. She goes down. Supernova not used, but King RD caught, getting caught out. Echo Slide goes to save his life. Fisher as well. Jog trouble. He's going to fall to the Enchant Totem. Baga going to work. I Annihilate getting low. Yule Scepter from Merlini, but it's a two versus five fight. Two versus four, rather. Now two versus three, but it's a disaster. And Merlini's going to fall. They get the kill. The right click from 40R. Tavo jumping in. They'll jump in with I Annihilate. Baga pops the Ghost Scepter, dies anyways. Berserk call. I and I like, should be okay for the most part. He's going to be able to ball lightning away. Oh, he gets his gem as well. Oh, there's he's going to try to fight this ground. Orchid onto Tavo, but I and I like, out of mana. He has to be careful. Blink is available. I and I like, has to back away. Only has seven charges. Berserker's call misses. The trap not in time, but I and I like, in trouble. He can ball lightning further and actually makes it away. He's going to be okay. He should not be alive, I feel like. Uh... I don't know. He had so much mana available. so And they, it's not like they have an, a Basher or Abyssal, only the Call to work with. But they are going to secure Roche now. That even costs Annihilate his buyback onto the Storm Spirit. So that is no longer going to be available. Has fallen to the 
Jeez. Cabo even Jeez. preemptively BKBs. Right. He puts down well, the Midas, I think, from 40R and another item from somebody else. And What a fight. In fact, these last couple of minutes, we talked about it. You don't want to get to the, the late game against the TA, against the Axe, and against the, the Slark. And all of a sudden, it's becoming a pretty big issue for Black Sheep here, where they're... It feels like they're hanging on, kind of. Yeah, and especially because the, the Shadow Fiend didn't really go this right-click build. He had a lot of items. Like, he still has a few items in his inventory that don't really add damage. The Yules as well as the Blink. So maybe you want to swap those out for, you know, something like a Daedalus could be quite nice since none of the pain heroes have evasion. Probably not even going to work towards evasion. I think uh, nice. the item for Slurk would be a Abyssal Blade, possibly. And then the item for Templar Assassin. TA might actually get evasion, but I still think Daedalus would be quite nice for think, the Shadow Fiends. I think BS also need another source of lockdown, whether that's from an Orchid or something. But I just don't know who gets that item. I feel like because the BKBs are starting to wear low for pain, that if you're Black Sheep and you get oh, I Annihilate going in, he actually gets silenced up. Berserker's call. I Annihilate just bought back. That was... That's a disastrous. bit too much. Yeah, that I mean, might be the Thank God game. he has the Bloodstone because... Even with the Bloodstone, man. would be enormous. It's still 80 seconds, though. That's the problem. Is that going to cost them a Tier 3 tower? I think that, that's the most it could possibly cost them. I don't think this is going to be Rex. They have Glyph. So They're going to split push bottom as well. And if they can force back the, the, the TPs, they, they probably are okay. 50-minute game. We got a bathroom break. We got a pause break. We're, we're going to get up, stretch out. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I mean, we can see in this game, like the offlaner, especially like if you compare these two offlaners, Phoenix has really, you know, it was really strong in this mid game where they have this Phoenix tree. But you can see in these last couple of fights, he's just had a hard time getting his ult off. Like he dies so quickly, doesn't actually go for one of these more popular builds, something like a Shiva's guard, although the storm does have that. But, you know, maybe he could have even gone for an armor item like AC possibly could have been quite nice. Um, this Aghanim Scepter, it, they only really used it effectively one time in the bottom lane when they like refreshed uh, SF's life. So it hasn't really paid off for them. So a bit of wasted gold sort of at this point. And we can just see how like this Phoenix Treant combo has uh, sort of fallen off. I mean, with all these BKBs coming out from Pain, Treant not adding a lot of damage, whereas you compare the like these supports sure a lion is super effective but i mean you compare like tree to Earthshaker or skywrath who are doing so much work in these team fights they're just like not comparable these black sheep heroes are just slowly falling off yeah that that's a composition issue which we kind of knew i think from the get-go but mm -hmm. for black sheep it's becoming a reality at this point uh, g is called i don't know if i annihilate's good to go either but we we are about in terms of actual time in which this game has been going it's been about 65 minutes because of the draft uh, mm -hmm. obviously this pause so a pretty long game but it doesn't feel that long it's been exciting throughout it's been a lot it's of action exciting. yeah mm -hmm. certainly has uh, well, as I, we're gonna see what pain can do with this 65 seconds left until the storm responds no buyback is available it pretty much comes down to i think split push but merlin is not going to go any further they back up. They're waiting maybe to see some of the heroes on the map. They see all of them in the enemy jungle with the illusion. That's an assault Kuros now done. You thought I thought Abyssal Blade also would have been a good choice, but he goes for the armor mm -hmm. reduction instead. An extra armor for his team. Uh, it's pretty nice considering like all of their damage is physical. Like Axe does a lot of Axe, you know, counter helix all physical damage. Uh, Templar Assassin all physical damage. Slark all physical damage. So Ooh, Merlin is gonna get to the tower before their creep wave does. Uh, tier three tower is, is got glyph. It's gonna be used, but Radiant's I think they're just gonna trade tier threes here. And Pain might lose more than they bargained for. I think they have to Radiant's make a decision here: tower. either go or uh, fight. Go for Rex, possibly. And they're gonna—they're actually gonna try to fight with a couple heroes Dyer's in the top lane. They force out Baga down okay, bottom. Or then he's gonna TP anymore. up. So now the numbers advantage is, is gone. Yeah, they, they take the tier up. three, and, and somehow Black Sheep come out with almost a better trade there, especially if they can get this kill. Yule Scepter on the top. He won't be able to blink. Now the overgrowth coming in. They pop the BK. King RD gets his refraction oh. off the finger, does nothing. Now he gets his BKB, gets the cheese as well. 40R gets hexed up. Can they get this kill? That's the question. Orchid, 40R. That's just the Aegis, though. It's not that much. I know they're going to TP back home. Berserker's call that. He did that right in front of everybody. I'm not sure about that. He gets silenced, forced out. 40R gets the kill. 
I annihilate with some questionable plays. I feel like 40 are getting earth spiked as well. Can't go any further. Still chasing, but now with I annihilate dead for 70 seconds. Oh, that could have been it. Pain might just, just have secured themselves at least a set of racks here. FBS are not careful. Careful, excuse me. Oh, yeah, I think that does get them a racks. It does cost pain quite a bit using the Aegis as well as the cheese. Black Sheep might try to hold, especially with the Refresher Orb now available from Phoenix. Although, you know, he only is going to have one egg even if he uses a Refresher. The other one's on cooldown for 60 seconds. Might have to just be content with giving this one up. Berserker's call, Merlini. If he goes down, that could be a problem. He does have buyback. He'll use himself up into the air. They can't get to him. Blinks away. Can't even get the Supernova off. So much for that ultimate coming out from the big bad bird. That's huge. Merlini's about to fall as well. He has buyback, but this just might be the beginning of the end. Black Sheep will lose their top racks. They're going to head mid, but there's a tier 2 tower. Instead, they're going to go for tier 4s. Probably the right decision. Yep. They have buyback up ready for Melody, but I and I let yeah, him respawn he, as well. He's going to wait until Storm's alive, I think. Uh, I, the game might, might be, be over late. at that point. 10 seconds. Merlin is going to have to do this one oh, on his own. Blink overgrowth. No usage of that ultimate. He doesn't have it. It's done for 10 seconds. They're going to work on the ancient. Can they defend? Yule Scepter is up. Now, Tavo jumps in. Merlini getting low. I annihilate back into the fray. 40R getting low, but the Echo Slam saves his life. 40R still okay. Annihilate gets annihilated, and that's probably it, ladies and gentlemen. Merlini's trying his damnedest, but that is done. It's going to be the Ancient going down at the dire side. Paint Gaming, your Brazilian squad, coming out on top in this first game. Honestly, a lot of this just came down to Storm not having that BKB. I mean, we see in these fights, sure, it was fine in the early game when he could just tank through all of this damage. But, I mean, the later it got, the more damage 